What's up you guys, Jonathan Zamora here. In today's video, my goal is to demystify Facebook ads and make it a little bit easier to start making decisions with your ads. At first glance, Facebook ads could be really intimidating. They have a ton of different functions, capabilities, and buttons just really all over the place. Personally, whenever I started dropshipping about two years ago, I used Facebook ads almost out of the gate. And I remember whenever I first started just thinking about how confusing the platform was. But since then, it's been a great platform to start and scale up my businesses. The amount of data that Facebook has on its audience is really insane. And it really allows for laser targeting on different audiences and demographics to really pinpoint who exactly you're trying to sell your product to. We're going to start at the very beginning with setting up the columns and getting your nomenclature down. This is just really how you're going to be labeling your campaigns, ad sets, and ads. And then after that, we'll get into the meat and potatoes, actually breaking down real data from my personal campaigns and showing you what exactly I would personally be changing. So the very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to business.facebook.com. If you don't already have an account, just go ahead and create one. It's relatively easy. But once you have that pulled up, you're going to go ahead and click on this menu in the top left hand corner and then hit ads manager. This will pull up your ad account. Hopefully you already have some campaigns running, but if you don't, it's not a big deal. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head on over to this button right here that says columns. This is going to ensure that we have all of the necessary data that we need to make decisions on our dashboard here. I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I have my column set up so that you could be looking at the same data. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit this columns button right over here and then go down to the very bottom and hit customize columns. So you're going to add each of these individually. So if you're wanting to add CPM, you would just type in CPM right here and it would come up and then you would go ahead and check the box. I'll put a few screenshots of the order that you should be putting this in and then just go ahead and pause the video and add them right now. Once you have all of them added, right down here, there's going to be all these little check boxes that are basically just duplicates of the same thing. So any of these additional check boxes, you're just going to want to uncheck so that we don't have duplicates of the same pieces of data. And then once that's all done, you're going to hit this save as preset button and then you can name it whatever you want. I have SF4. That's just my own personal name for it. You're welcome to name it whatever you would like. Once that's all done, you're going to go ahead and hit the apply button. Before we get into exactly how we should be looking at this data and what exactly we're looking for, it's important that we categorize it. So there's really going to be three different categories of data on our dashboard. The three categories of data that we have are before the click, after the click, and then overview metrics. Everything that is going to be represented in before the click data is going to be in these rows right here. These are all going to be data points that are going to be affected on the Facebook platform itself. So ad creatives or audience choices are going to be what is mostly affecting these different data points. Everything that is after the click is going to be represented in these columns. This is going to be everything that is happening on the website itself. Things like the website design or the description ad copy is going to have the biggest effect on these data points. And then our overview metrics are very simple that is going to be these data points here. This is just really going to give us an overview of what the funnel and the ad account is doing, how it's performing, and any general adjustments that we need to make. Okay, so when I was planning this video, I was actually going to go through and give you guys specific metrics that I look for. But I remember when I was back in high school, one of the things that I had to do was take driver's ed. And I remember the teacher just rambling for hours talking about how you should be driving, but it wasn't until I actually got behind a wheel and started driving that I learned how to start driving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get right behind the wheel. I'm gonna pull up one of my old ad accounts here and we'll analyze this data together. So let's go ahead and take a look. On the campaign level here, we have the campaign name. I prefer to categorize my campaigns by cold, hot, and warm. This is just how deep the audience is in the funnel. So at the very top of the funnel, the cold audience is people that have never seen our ads before. The warm audience is going to be people that have seen our ad but maybe haven't shown very much interest. The hot audience is people that have seen our ad and shown a lot of interest. This is really going to be categorized by different actions that they've taken either on our ad creative or on our website itself. So this is how I name all of my campaigns. Cold, that's the type of the audience. WC stands for the type of campaign. This is website conversions. PER stands for the optimization. And then this is just a general name for how I like to name this. So this is my top interest campaign. This column here is our CPM. This is basically the metric that Facebook uses to determine how much they're going to be charging you. To be honest, I really don't worry too much about CPM. I compare CPMs per ad set to get an understanding of quality for the different audiences that I'm testing. If we do everything else right, the CPM will lower on its own. Now these next three columns, the impressions is just people seeing our ad, three second video plays, and 95% video plays. That's exactly what it sounds like. It's just essentially how much of the ad our audience has 
watched. What I do with these three columns here is I compare the drop off rate from one another. So we can see we had 3 million impressions, meaning 3 million people saw this, but only roughly 1 million people actually got to three seconds of watching the video. So that could be an indication that we might need a better scroll stopper. This drop off rate here tells us basically how good our ad creative is. And if we see a really big drop off, maybe at the very beginning, then maybe we wanna change the scroll stopper. But if there's really no drop off here, but nobody's getting to the end, then maybe we want to change everything that's after the scroll stopper. You could kind of start to see how these different data points sort of give you clues on what you should be adjusting. Now our unique CTR all and our unique CTR link click through are very, very similar. So the unique CTR all is going to take into account pretty much everything that is happening on the ad itself. So if somebody opens up the ad to full screen, makes a comment, likes it, goes to your website, that will be included inside of CTR all. Then with the CTR link click through, that is going to be only the people that have clicked through to the website. So the difference between these two numbers will tell us how much engagement is actually happening on the ad creative. This is a good metric for one, how good is our ad creative? If the engagement's high, then we know our ad creative is actually pretty good. And then two, it also tells us how interesting our offer is. If we have a lot of people that are clicking through to the website, that means a lot of people are curious and want to know more about what we have to offer. Now with these metrics here, I'm typically going to be looking for about a 3% CTR all and about a 2% CTR link click through rate. Those are good metrics. They're not phenomenal. They're not amazing, but they're good. They're okay. They're roughly where I would like a product test to be early on. You can see here that our metrics are quite a bit higher than that. That just means that we have a really good ad creative that meshes really well with our audience. This is a little bit more of a developed campaign and you would start to increase this over time by testing different creatives and figuring out how much your audience actually resonates with the creative that you're showing them. Now the unique link clicks, this just basically puts a number on our unique CTR link click through rate. So it's just letting us know that we had about 80,000 people go to our website. Once we get to this point here, these are really the metrics that I start to pay attention to. From here on the unique content views, ads to cart, checkouts initiated and purchases, this is really where I start to do a lot of my calculations. So I'll show you guys roughly how I do this. I punch in this number right down here, 59,296. If we look at this 100% of people that have gone to our website, which is 59,296, I want to see about 10% of that audience add this to cart. So I'm going to multiply this by 0.1. I'm looking for roughly 5,929 people to add to cart. If I'm below that, then I know that I need to make some adjustments to probably my product description or pricing. So here we see that we have 6,300 ads to cart. That's more than what we're looking for. So we had more than a 10% add to cart rate, which is really, really good. Then at this point, I look for about a 50% drop off rate. So I multiply that by 0.5. And you can see right down here that we had about 2,500 people actually initiate checkout. So there, that's something that is below the metrics that I'm typically looking for, which is about 5% of our total audience initiating checkout. With that in mind, I know that I probably need to make some adjustments to my funnel, but specifically on the add to cart to initiate checkout because we have a higher drop off rate there. This is really just a baseline, but it allows me to see really where my weaknesses are. So one way that I would improve this is by either having a stronger email sequence for abandoned carts or a stronger text message sequence for the people that are also adding it to cart to see if I could get those numbers up a little bit. Then after this, I'm looking for about another half drop off right here, which would be about 1400 purchases. And you can see that's just under that. So if we were able to fix the add to carts to checkouts initiated, then we would probably have these purchases be in line. So we have 100% of people that go to the website, 10% of people add to cart, 5% of people initiate checkout, and then 2.5% of people actually make a purchase. This is just a rough baseline, but it lets us know where those weaknesses are. So this would be probably one of the things that I would be paying attention to. Now, as we move farther over, we have our cost per unique content view. I like this to be under a dollar at all times. If it's any higher than that, I know I need to make some adjustments to either my audience or the ad creative itself. And then with these ne uh, next couple of metrics here, this really just gives me a rough outline of how much I'm spending per ad that is taken on our website. So I'm roughly paying 88 cents to get somebody on the website, $8.23 to get somebody to add to cart, $20 to initiate a checkout and $37 to make a purchase. Here with the cost per purchase, this is really going to be my main focus. All these other metrics are useful and they could tell us where these different holes are in our funnel. The cost per purchase is really going to be our North Star. In this case, we had a product that we were selling for $120. Our cost of goods was 47. So that left us with a break even 
even point, the difference between those two numbers, which is essentially just our profit, our profit was $73. So that meant that we could spend $73 per purchase on ads and break even. That we don't make any money, but we didn't lose any money either. So I use this as a North Star to figure out whether or not I'm profitable and whether or not I'm moving in the right direction. As long as this number is lower than our break even point, we're in a pretty solid position. So I'm looking for this to be under $73, and this is currently 37. So this looks pretty good to me. And now we're on the last section here, which is going to be our overview metrics. This is really what allows us to have total control over our ad account and just really monitor overall health of the store. So here we have our budget. I really treat this like a thermostat. With the budget, I will increase it by 15 to 30% every three to four days if it's doing well. And if it's doing bad, I decrease my budgets by 15 to 30% every three or four days. It's like a thermostat for me where I'm turning it up when things are good and then I turn it down whenever things are bad just to find a nice medium. The amount spent is gonna tell us roughly how much we had to spend on our ads and then the purchase conversion value tells us how much we got back in return. Now the row as is going to be telling us how much we are getting back for every single dollar. So in this case, I put in $1 into my ads and I got back $3.29. You could use a break-even ROAS to really be your North Star, but I personally prefer a cost per purchase since it's a little bit easier to gauge. Again, this is just going to be an overall measure of health. If the ROAS is high, that's good. If the ROAS is low, then that's bad. And then the last thing over here is going to be our frequency. This just roughly tells us how many times our audience is seeing this ad creative. If this frequency starts to get to a two, a three, we know that our audience is starting to get saturated. So it would be a good idea for us to change up the creative so that they're seeing a new angle on the product. And it's almost like reintroducing it in a different light. Overall, this campaign looks very healthy. There's not a ton of adjustments that you have to make to this. This is a little bit farther along than a lot of campaigns will be. So we have this baseline of what we're looking for. Whenever we see any of these metrics that are weaker, then that's really when we're going to start making some adjustments. So for me personally, if I was going to go through and try to make a adjustments on this campaign, I know that all of my before the click metrics all the way up until this point right here, all of these metrics look very healthy. There's nothing that really needs to be adjusted here. Our click through rates are really good. That means that we have a good audience, that we have a really good creative. But then once we start getting to the website, that's really where we start to see a drop off where it's not performing as well as it should be, especially from add to cart to checkouts initiated. So that tells me that the biggest hole that I have in my funnel right now is going to be the abandoned cart sequences whether that's email or text message. That's where I should be making adjustments. That's where I should be spending the majority of my energy. This is going to be different for every single campaign. So you're gonna to have to go through and audit it using the same sort of framework that we explained here and then figure out where your problems are and then make adjustments based off of what the data says. If you got to this point and want to show some appreciation for putting together this video, go ahead and smash the like button. It really helps out the channel. And it also lets me know that you guys like seeing a little bit more in-depth content like this. But if you haven't followed me on Instagram, go ahead and drop me a follow right down here. I post there pretty much daily. So if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, go ahead and drop me a follow. Feel free to message me. I would love to connect with you guys. But that's it for this one, guys. I will see you on the next video. Peace.